So we're talking about Pimp My Blue Ocean. So about my person, I'm one of the um, original Blue Ocean developer and now working within uh, CloudBees in, in another team. But we're using actually Blue Ocean to deliver uh, additional functionality and features. So what we're going to talk about, uh, you actually can review and actually do it by yourself now in front of your computer if you want. So you can go to my uh, repository in GitHub. I created uh, JV17BOC. So with that, you're actually getting um, a basic setup of a Jenkins plugin completely functional against Blue Ocean, current version of Blue Ocean. Further, I actually um, I added some Docker file. If you do not want to run the example NPM and stuff like that in your in your normal box, you can do that via Docker. And for community and for testing reason, we of course added a Jenkins file. So you have here the, the readme, how you actually can do that. I will not explain that in detail rather than going now and dive into the presentation. So what we're going to do is we actually will we'll create a custom component, right? And we will use our custom CSS. What you're actually right now seeing, if you look carefully in the URL of my browser, is actually a, a React storybook. Mm -hmm. So I on the, on the right-hand side, you see my IDE where the actual presentation is hosted. And if you can see, for example, I can change here something and would we'll save it and it will be updated di directly right away. So I'm not lying. <laughs> so what uh, we would show you right now is uh, we want to go and uh, extend here the logo of, of Jenkins, right? So um, as you all know, Jenkins is actually based around um, uh, about extension points, right? So now let's dive into uh, the typical plugin autonomy of, of uh, our plugin or the normal Jenkins plugins for the front end, let's say that. So basically, what's very important is uh, our two files are the, the Jenkins extension Java, right? And our custom component that we are creating. So the index jelly are more mm, traditional. Mm, mm, File, let's say that for, for classic Jenkins, right? And this Jenkins JS extension journal is very important. So let's have a look here how that actually looks like, right? So what we're doing with this file is we're actually telling Blue Ocean to use a different extension than the one that is for, for as default um, configured, right? It's like how we actually found that out or how do you see where or which um, extensions exist is sometimes uh, it's not very well documented. Let's say that, but uh, one two good places are there. It's like uh, first of all, it's uh, in the dashboard, right? If you have a look in the Jenkins GL extension journal, right there, you see our default um, extensions, right? And you can always it's always the same pattern. You see the extension point with a, have a unique um, ID for identifier, right? And then you actually store uh, the your component um, within the root, or you can, you get for example here you have uh, example for a different path, right? It doesn't have to be in the same level as the Jenkins logo, but it should be like relatively. Uh, Accessibility, accessible, right? So let's see, for example, how actually that is implemented. If you go to the core plugin, right, there's a component which is this con con called content page header. And here we actually define our extension, right? Here, what we're saying is mm, give me the extension of Jenkins Saga logo, right? And I will pass as default implementation the blue logo with a, with a props home, right? Which actually results in something like this. We have here the extension point, right? We have here the href for the blue ocean logo. And you can see this is a, is a big SVG, right? Where the extension point or so where the logo is passed through, right? So back to our presentation. So what we're doing here, like said, what we what we want to do is we override our logo, our Hank Jenkins header logo, and our final result will look something like that, 
right? So I love my Jenkins. So how do we actually implement that? So if we go to the corresponding component, we can see here that is a um, com traditional React component, right? Um, if you can see here that I can, or I actually created a class and I created an icon or I used an icon and uh, then I used my, and then I used the, the, the children, right? So if I go ahead and dis deploy that on my running Jenkins, it will become something like that, right? So, for example, if I said I don't want to, to render this SVG at all, I can actually go ahead and get rid of that. I save it, right? So now I actually have to tell, because if I refresh here, nothing will happen, right? Because I don't have deployed it yet. So let's do that. I actually um, use for everything, for every comment, I use <laughs> a comment with two letters. So NB would be NPM run bundle. So if I do here NB. What I'm doing is actually telling um, Jenkins to actually deploy my new bundle. So if I now go here and refresh the whole thing, you will see that the Jenkins is gone, right? So you can see actually it is quite quick right now to actually here implement my work and then directly seeing the result here if, if I go through the route of bundling all the time when I change my 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 plugin, right? First, so, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, it, I mean the heart's really easy to see. But could you zoom in a little bit on that on the on the left uh, on your browser? Cool, thanks. Sorry about that. No, that's fine. Cool, great. Yeah. So um, here, if I now go and refresh again, I get back my Jenkins logo, right? So some points of of, uh, of heads up, like it always has to be, you have always have to have a um, default export for your component, right? So the extension jumble always needs a default implementation. Otherwise, it actually will complain and it will not work, right? So let's go back to our presentation. This is what we're seeing right now. So the, the, the second thing is, if, if you may have noticed, we have um, our default blue, right, here in there. But if you compare it with our here, we actually have a different kind of blue. We, we made it a little bit more um, darker, let's say, right? So how did we do that? So if you see here, we have in the class in classic structure of our component, we have a main less and there we have an extension file, right? So if we use this extension less file, Jenkins will actually know that we want to extend the CSS um, that's given into it, right? And um, put it in our bundle. If you see it down here, I'm not sure whether you can see that good and uh, now I can make it actually bigger it's you can see here it's actually picked up in our bundling script you see here the less and the C pre-processing completed right and here we actually using this file right and we actually um, compiling it to CSS so the interesting part here is like when we compare it with our result is it's so like, this is my logo, and we said we have a butter, uh, border bottom um, with um, two point pixels. That would be the red one here, right? And we have a background color of um, 47. For example, if I don't want to have that background color, because I added that only to make uh, React Storybook happy, because we have here the same example, but this will be going into detail in the second part of my speech. So for to make that happen, that I have this color, I actually use this background, right? So if I get rid of this color here and say, I will do a bundling again and go back to my Jenkins, because you can see here, there's, there's two colors, right? This one is darker than this one. And if we get rid of the color background here and refresh it here, you will see that this is now without any colors, right? So what, what I'm showing here is like the basic um, working with, with CSS, right? Uh, or better said, less, which will then create it to, to my CSS that I want. I will go back to that version. So now 
what we're talking about is like how did I actually came to my the 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 way to actually have my uh, my different color here in the header, right? So what we're doing here actually is we we set the back uh, the basic header default in color, right? It's a uh, it's a four e seven, right? So what we're doing here, if you go inspect this page, you see that here this color, right, is the same as this one. So if I get rid of that, we have our original blue, right? So this is actually a trick or a hook because of deep knowledge of Blue Ocean, right? Because the problem at part with our solution here is that we don't define a good um, variable, for example, like we define here the brain primary color, right? To to say like which is our which is our, our um, primary color, and then it would be picked up by by uh, Blue Ocean. However, there is is a ticket open in Jenkins four 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 six six, and there is actually described this this problem and how to actually add the theme support to to actually easily more easily even extended than than now. For me, for example, would be a dream to have an extension point for CSS and then I extend that with my my variables of the color that I wanted for for the the different extension points. Um, I think. Where it's now it would be time. Yeah, is there any questions? Are there any questions? Yeah, actually, there there is one. Sorry, I was muted again there for a second. Uh, uh, what are the URLs that people can can check out your code at? Because uh, this is all really really cool stuff. We just it'd be cool to be able to sort of dig into it and play around with it some more. You can see it on the screen right now. Uh, yes, thank you. You're welcome. 